Hello everyone. So this is our project. Uh, the materials which we get from the packaging out. Uh, this is the power adapter for the charging purpose of the system. And this is the main system which we are going to consider the smart agriculture system. So first of all, let's segregate the material out which we are going to have. This is the pump. Demonstration pump system. Uh, this is our soil temperature sensor. And this is our soil moisture system or the soil moisture sensor. These are the external uh, pieces which are being connected to the main board. And now in this main board, we are having a Raspberry Pi unit, which is basically acting as the server, a database center, as well as the actuator control center. This is the relay. This is a 12 volt relay or 5 volt relay. You can use any one. And we are basically using this for the controlling the pump system. This is the DHT 11 sensor for the temperature and the humidity outside the soil. We'll be getting the values for the outside the soil and we'll be uh, using that for the comparison to the, uh, to the uh, values which we are going to have in the soil. This is the sensor control unit which uses an Arduino Nano and all these sensors, the DHT 11 sensor, the, DHT, the uh, soil temperature sensor and the soil moisture sensor are being connected directly to the Arduino and this Arduino unit and the Arduino is basically going to get this value out and these values are being serially transferred to our Raspberry Pi. From Raspberry Pi, these values will be sent to our server databases. And we have used this uh, battery to just represent an external power source to uh, start on the pump as we are not able to like uh, in the real world scenario, we are not able to start this pump with a normal battery or a 5 volt supply. They will be requiring a much bigger supply. So let's go and dive into this and see for how to set up uh, this system for the very first time. So for the very first time when we are going to start the system out, we need to uh, give power to the Raspberry Pi. For that we have connected the data cable uh, with the Raspberry Pi and this data cable can be connected to the uh, adapter which is supplied with it or you can just connect with this to a power bank itself. Both the supplies will work for the Raspberry Pi. Fine. And then we are going to connect this uh, Raspberry Pi with the HDMI cable so that we can see the data output or the display on a monitor itself. And after that we are going to connect a mouse with the Raspberry Pi. So in order to basically select for the settings and uh, to move around with the menus itself. Fine. So let's just start with powering up. Before that, just make sure whenever you are going to connect this for the very first time, you have to remove this Arduino cable so that it's not consuming the power out from the Raspberry Pi. Now let's just connect with the power bank and there you go. It's starting booting up. Now we can move towards the screen. As you can see, it's basically in the booting mode and it will just require a minute or long for the booting process. So here we go with our basic uh, desktop of the Raspberry Pi. Now the main thing which we want to uh, know is whether is our system uh, is being connected to our own Wi-Fi system or the hotspot system or not. Uh, if it's not, you basically go to have to connect that first and we are just going to note this IP address over here. So in, in this case, it's 192.168.1.107. So this is the main important thing. If it's changing, uh, then we are going to change this value this uh, IP address into our code so that we are able to send the data to the uh, database center. So let's see how we are going to change this out and we have to basically do this for the very first time. So in order to basically uh, connect a Raspberry Pi with the remote decks, uh, we can use two softwares. Either we can go with the Putty app or we can go with the VNC viewer. So like, uh, like for the change in the IP address, we will be using the Putty app. So let's go and see. After that, like this is the, for the very first time. After that, we can set the uh, static IP address to the Raspberry Pi and we can directly use that IP address every time we are going to turn on the device. So like uh, for that, because of the availability of the different uh, Wi-Fi systems, like whenever we change the Wi-Fi system, the gateway changes. And that's why we require to change this IP address for the very first time. So let's go and see with the Putty app how we are going to connect this out. Uh, let me just find my Putty app. Yeah, so we are over here. 
So uh, that's why we have noted the IP address for the Raspberry Pi because it will be asking for the IP address. So in this case, we are having the IP address to be 192.168.1.107. So like the port will be 22 and we are using the SSH command. Fine. And we're just going to start with the open. Okay. So we are just going to have a yes and it will be asking for the uh, login as. So in this, we are having the username for this system is pi and the password will be admin123. So here we go. We have changed this out. Now, in order to change that IP address thing, we require this command cd slash var slash triple w slash html. So over here, as you can see, we have moved to this folder out. Now we will be going to have an ls command to see the files over here. Now, as you can see, uh, we are going to move to this file script.js. Over here, we are going to change that uh, IP address thing out. So how we are going to change? Let's just type the command for that. sudo nano script.js. Now in this line, you can see the second line, the IP address is written. So previously it was 106, now it's 107. So we just want to change this 7 from the previous 6 one. Now press Ctrl X, then Y, then Enter. Now it's been changed. So our IP address thing is completed. Now let's move to see how the system, we are going to turn on the processes and how we are going to start the system out. So for that, we are going to just exit from the Putty app. Now since uh, we know our IP address, we can just go with the VNC viewer as well. Now let's just start with the device and let's just connect our Raspberry Pi with the VNC viewer. For that, we will be requiring to give the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So which is 192.168.1.107 for this time. And it will be asking for the username. It's Pi. And for the password, it's admin 1.2.3. So there we go. We are connecting to the same desktop as we have seen onto the HDMI display. Now from this time, like, we will not be requiring to have an HDMI display to be connected. We can directly connect with any device, any laptop or any mobile phone, which is having this availability of the VNC viewer. We can directly connect with that itself. Just make sure like the both the systems, the both the system, uh, once your SBI Pi and your like uh, user uh, display board, like it can be your uh, mobile phone or it can be your laptop will be into the same network. Fine. Now we just going to start with the uh, code for the uh, system out. Uh, before that, like basically just connect the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi with the USB cable, which we have just uh, plugged out during the powering system out. Fine. So we will be going to the file section, and after that we'll be going to the data dot py file. So this is the basic code which we are going to run. Now the basic thing is like in the Arduino, uh, the code will be automatically running out. But in the Raspberry Pi, we have to go and to start this code. So for that, we just going to have to run like uh, click this button and we're going to run for this. Uh, it will be showing like the uh, GPI systems are already running. So we are just uh, it's a warning. So don't nothing to worry for that. And then we are just going to have the outputs like the data has been inserted. Now, if we want to see the output out, uh, our, like the uh, user uh, interface for the system, we can just go towards the uh, net, uh, like the Google browsers. Any browser can work. Uh, let's go into the browser available in the Raspberry Pi itself. Or you can basically just shift towards your, uh, like your Chrome browser itself. It can work in any way. So like just go to the browser and enter the IP address of a Raspberry Pi. So in this case, it's 192. Dot 168.1.107 and there we go this is the basic system uh, like the basic user interface we are going to have for our device so we have the four buttons over here uh, like the complete data table graphical interface uh, to change the threshold value and do the pump control system so this is the gauss chart which we are going to have uh, which will be showing us the outer temperature from the DHT11 sensor, the outer humidity level from the DHT11 sensor, 
this will be showing the soil temperature the soil temperature sensor and this is going to be uh, checking for the soil moisture level at present also we are going to have a status for our pump as well fine so you can see that this space will be reloading or after every seven seconds uh, because of the reason like after five seconds the data will be sent to the raspberry pi and for like uploading the data out we'll be taking for an additional two seconds after that it will be uploaded out so we can see uh, every new data for every seven seconds fine so this is the main thing now if you want to see this whole data system out from the complete table out you can go you can see this from the complete data table so you can see from which date which time what it was your temperature outside what was the temperature inside the soil and what was the pump status now we can just go back as well so you can see like it's will be continuously uh, changing and changing like it will be updating continuously so if we want to see this into a graphical representation we can also see that so as we can see the graphical representation of our sensor data value the four values will be displayed over here so it will be also we keep on uh, refreshing every time now this is the main control these are the two main controls we are going to have as we can see the pre present moisture on the soil is 16 percent if the user wants to change this out you can directly change by going to to change option and let's just put this value to 40 and let's see what is the change we are going to see so as you can see uh, there is a click button from the pump systems uh, from the relay and now we are going to see the status as to be a on status so in this way it will be automatically controlling the system out till the time we are able to get this value close to 45 close to 50 uh, the pump will automatically uh, turn down now after your use you can just if you want to again change this out you can just put this value uh, as of uh, 10 itself so just see whether if it goes down or not so another click shows uh, like the next data will be showing us that the pump status is off also there's an option to manually control the pump as well you can just go to the pump control option and you can just click on on just make sure like you are going to do this a fast way because uh, the way uh, the page will be reloaded so as you can see the pump is on this is the manual control now if you can go again and you want to turn off the pump you can just see this out with this status indicator the user can just see whether the pump was on or whether the pump was off so this was the main project thanks for watching